Hello, welcome to the Friday, November 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a diary by Jan showing an interesting and somewhat dangerous behavior of Outlook 365 and EML file attachments. EML files are essentially emails and you probably have seen them. If you save an email message, it often is saved as an EML file. And if they're used as attachment, your mail client may kind of interpret them as an email. Now, many, Mail filters are looking at these email files just because they can easily be mistaken for an actual email message, but apparently Outlook 365 doesn't do so. Well, Jan looked into what he can do with this behavior as part of a pen test and what he found a lot of tricks that don't work anymore in a normal email, like for example, having one URL visible to the user and another URL that's actually then being clicked on. Well, uh, that works still as an email attachment and uh, actually you can fake the from address and Outlook 365 in his case he used PayPal, did actually put the PayPal logo right next to the from address, kind of confirming to the user that this appears to be a valid PayPal email, which it wasn't. Jan did notify Microsoft about this behavior, but Microsoft replied that they're not really considering this a security issue since it does rely on social engineering. And as part of October's Patch Tuesday, Microsoft fixed a TLS spoofing vulnerability, CVE 2019-13-18, but apparently introduced an issue with this patch that causes TLS connections to a timeout. To address this problem, Microsoft published now a knowledge base article with workarounds. Probably the best thing you can do is enable support for extended master secret. This TLS extension was actually specifically introduced to prevent some of the man in the middle issues with TLS. The other option if your system doesn't support EMS is just to remove the TLS DHE ciphers. Shouldn't really be a big issue because the October update also enabled extended master secret. Uh, so it should already be enabled on your system. But if you're running into some issues with a TLS connections timing out, you may want to double check this article from Microsoft. And if you need yet another reason not to trust SMS messages, FireEye has a write-up about an incident where servers at the telecommunication provider were compromised specifically to intercept messages. These were Linux servers that operated a short message servicing center and as such they would essentially route SMS messages and this malware on these servers was intercepting these messages. The malware used a configuration file that listed phone numbers and IMSIs that they were interested in and also certain keywords. And whenever one of these keywords was mentioned, the message was grabbed and copied. FireEye attributes uh, this particular incident to APT41, which FireEye identifies as a Chinese APT group. And looks like Amazon may have some issue how third-party devices are linked to your Amazon account. It is possible to, for example, link a Roku device or certain smart TVs to your Amazon account and use them to make purchases. The problem here is that first of all, these devices don't show up in your account as linked devices. And secondly, once a device is linked, a user can use this device and it will remain linked even if you are changing your password. 
Also, two-factor authentication policies and such do not apply to this device. Apparently, this was already exploited by someone linking a smart TV to a customer's account and using that smart TV to, for example, purchase PlayStation gift cards. Not a lot of detail about this yet, but this looks like possibly an OAuth 2 fail. With OAuth 2, you sort of are able to negotiate these authentication tokens. And yes, these authentication tokens do not change if you change your password, but typically, you should have a list somewhere in your account where all these devices or other applications are listed to which you provided access. Apparently, that's of the big fail here that non-Amazon devices are not listed and can also not easily be removed. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.